Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to kick off the waves topic by looking at the energy and amplitude of a wave. So let's get started. Now, the first part of the waves topic for advanced tyre looks at the relationship between the energy and amplitude of a wave. And this is something you should have seen at National 5 level. So it starts here by saying that waves transfer energy from one place to another. And again, you should know that from that 5, but I'll just show you a quick simulation to help you remember this. So if you look at this basic simulation here, you'll see we have a massive boulder on the edge of a cliff and we've got some water here with a fish. And if we click play here, you'll see the massive boulder falling into the water causes a wave to be produced and the energy transferred by the wave causes the fish to move up and down. So let me just show you that again. So we've got the energy being transferred by the wave there, causing the fish to move. Going back to the notes now, the second statement here says that in a longitudinal wave such as sound waves, the sound particles move back and forth in the direction of wave travel. Whereas in a transverse wave such as water waves, the movement of the water particles is perpendicular to the direction of energy travel, i.e. the wave travel. And these definitions were seen at National 5 level, but let me just show you a few simulations to help you remember them. So first up we have longitudinal waves and we're going to look at what the particle movement looks like for longitudinal waves. So if we click play, you'll see the direction of the wave goes from left to right, but the direction of movement of the particles is back and forth. And remember we said an example of these kind of waves would be a sound wave. So you can see the back and forth movement of the particles and that's in the same direction or parallel to the direction of the wave, back and forth. And if we were to focus on just one particle, like this red one over here, then you'll see that all it's doing is moving back and forth and it goes from being bunched up with other particles to then spread out on its own. So it's worth just remembering that longitudinal waves are waves in which the particles move back and forth along the same direction as the wave. Looking at transverse waves this time, we have the particles again, and if I click play, you'll see the direction of the wave travels from left to right again, but this time the particles move perpendicular to the direction of wave travel at 90 degrees. And again, if we were to focus on just one of the particles like this red one over here, you'll see that all it's doing is moving up and down. It's not moving along with the wave. And that's at 90 degrees to the direction of the wave travel, which is the same as the direction of energy. And examples of transverse waves include water waves, light waves, and any wave from the electromagnetic spectrum, such as radio waves, microwaves, infrared waves, and so on. So it's worth just remembering that transverse waves are waves in which the particles vibrate at 90 degrees to the direction of wave travel. Going back to the notes, it says that only energy is transferred in the direction of wave travel, not mass. That is, the water molecules themselves do not travel with the wave, the energy passes over the water surface. And we can visualise this by going back to our boulder and fish simulation from earlier. So if I click play here, you'll see again the boulder causes a wave to be produced and the energy of the wave is transferred along the wave surface. And it says here the energy is transferred from A to B by the water wave moving from left to right. There's no net movement of water from A to B, so we're saying there's no mass transferred along with the wave. That is, in wave motion, energy is transferred from one position to another with no net mass transfer. Jumping back to the notes now, it says that the amount of energy transferred depends on the amplitude of the wave. The greater the amplitude, the greater the energy transferred. So let's remind ourselves of some of the parts of a transverse wave, including crest, trough, amplitude and wavelength. So here's our basic transverse wave pattern and we've got four parts labelled for us. So just a reminder from National 5 that the top point of a wave is called the crest, the bottom point of a wave is called the trough, and then we've got the amplitude which is what we're concerned about in this topic, which remember is half the vertical height of the wave. So we would say the full vertical height would go from the crest to the trough down here, but the amplitude is just half of that distance. So it's half the vertical height of the wave or the distance from the crest to the axis or from the trough to the axis. So this arrow here is labelling the amplitude. And lastly we have the wavelength. And remember wavelength can be defined in many ways. So we can define the wavelength as the horizontal distance from trough to trough. We could define it also as the distance from crest to crest. Or we could define it as the horizontal distance from one point in the wave to the same point on the next wave. So for example, if we started here, the same point on the next wave would be all the way up, all the way down and back to the start. So that would be here. So one wavelength would be from here to here. Or we could define it from a random point. So it could be say this point here and one full wave along would be over here. And we can see how energy and amplitude are related through this simulation as well. So here we have waves in the sea and you've got this boat which is bobbing up and down because of the waves. And if we were to decrease the amplitude of the waves here, you'll see that the energy transferred decreases as well. So there we've got barely any waves and there's not much movement of the boat. And we could completely stop the waves by giving them zero amplitude there. And that means there's no energy transferred at all. But if we increase the energy of the waves gradually, you'll see the boat will bob up and down more and more as it's given more energy. And right now it looks like a very choppy sea. 
So the bigger the amplitude of the waves, the more energy is transferred. And if we look back at the notes, we can see how the energy and amplitude are related. So it says, in other words, the energy transferred by a wave is directly proportional to the square of its amplitude. So in symbol form, we say E is directly proportional to A squared, where E is for energy and A is for amplitude. So we could write that E is equal to KA squared, where all we've done here is replace the directly proportional sign with an equal sign. And if we do that, remember the wee trick from national five and higher is that we need to multiply the thing on the right hand side by a constant. And here we're just calling K our constant. So we've got E equals KA squared. And you'll find that equation on the relationship sheet in the exam. It then says getting the constant on its own, if we divide both sides by a squared, we get e over a squared is equal to k, and therefore we can form a new equation from this. And we did do this in National 5 and higher as well, for things like the inverse square law for light and higher, and for all the gas laws in National 5. And what we said was that if we have something equal to a constant, then we can introduce our variables 1s and 2s, for initial and final variables. So we could write e1 over a1 squared is equal to e2 over a2 squared. And this is just another way of writing that the ratio of the energy to the amplitude squared is a constant. And here we can see that E1 and E2 are the initial and final energies of the wave measured in joules, and A1 and A2 are the initial and final amplitudes of the wave measured in meters. Now it's worth pointing out that this equation here, although I've put it in a box, it doesn't actually appear on the relationship sheet in the exam. So it's helpful to just remember this, or to remember how to get it from this relationship, which is on your equation sheet. So E1 over A1 squared is equal to E2 over A2 squared. And that just comes from this one here. And if you are using this equation at any point, remember just to square the amplitudes on the bottom, because that's something that pupils often forget. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.